Well, well, well. I did say in the last podcast that if you like that one, you'll likely be back to listen to this one. So here we are. This is Kevin Johnson of Leverage Consulting, and you are listening to the Resilient Entrepreneur Podcast number 17. And today we're talking about operating in fear. In many of the engagements that I have with clients, this is one of the things that we work with, work, we work to identify, and we work to identify how we're going to work through operating in fear. And I can, I again, am I'm willing to bet my lunch money that every one of you at some point in time, and maybe in recent history, have operated in fear. And if you, if you doubt what I'm saying, think back over the last few months and think about in, in you know all these unprecedented and uncharted times that we're in, I'm sure that you had some element of that. And you may have had examples of, I don't want to do this because Jenny's going to leave me. I don't want to do this because my customers, patients, or clients may not like this. We don't want to implement this because I don't know what I'm getting into when I do this. And you know, there are countless, countless other examples of things like this, but I'm sure that even with the three that I just mentioned, you've probably had instances like that. And when we have instances like this, and, and again, I like to use other examples, but could you imagine having had a blowout on your car at the age of 22 years old and you had to drive at 25 miles an hour until you could get over on the side of the road and then get your tire fixed? Or have somebody else fix it for you. Could you imagine after having having fixed that tire and you're now in your 40s, 20 years later, could you imagine someone still driving 25 miles an hour because of the what if? What if my tire blows out again? That's just absurd. But here we are years later, 20 some years later, and we're still doing the same thing. We're wondering about the what if. We're still sitting here wondering, what if Jenny does leave me? And sometimes we really have to look at the big picture of things of when you're the manager, the leader, or key team member in a practice, a business, you're there to get this company, this business from point A to point B. And sometimes that point A to point B is day to day, and sometimes it's the long term. But operating in fear, I can assure you, is never going to get you to your destination. It's never going to define your future. It's never going to help you achieve your goals. So if you're interested, if you're determined to get away from operating in fear and move towards getting towards your goals, then we need to figure out just a few things. So in identifying a few things, we will first look at what are the alternatives? Because usually doing nothing is a bad option. Doing nothing usually ends up with a bad result. And again, operating in fear usually means people get paralyzed. They, they hold back. They don't jump in. They don't grab this with both hands and just take control. So usually these alternatives are things where we start looking at what if I did grab this with two hands and I'm going to take control of this problem and I'm going to fix it? What if we just allow this thing to run its course? And I can tell you all too often, and it, this is one of the one of the probably the most classic things I see is when we see some discord or we see some issues between two people. And if you're an owner or a manager, you just sit back and, and hope, we hope that this just works its way out. And usually it's not going to have a great outcome. Will the, will the smoke and fire go away? Maybe. But sometimes the smoke and fire goes away because one of them gets mad and leaves. The smoke and fire may go away because one of those individuals basically steamrolled the other one and steamrolled the other one into submission to where they just give up. And it may not be that they give up on the tension between them. It may be that they give up on your business. They may give up on the role. They may give up on your team. And those are not good solutions. So usually when we look at 
the reasons why people get paralyzed, it's because of the short-term discomfort. And short-term discomfort is just that. It's short-term. Whereas if we allow most of these situations to play out, the long-term discomfort is far greater. So we avoid something today. Okay, great. I don't have any discomfort for a week or two or something like that. And now I have this discomfort of I have bad morale in my practice. Now I have to fill a position because somebody got mad and left. Now I have an even worse problem because now I have someone who's given up on their job in, the, in my office or my practice and they're just done. They just don't care anymore. And that is literally one of the worst things you can have is somebody who is still employed and they don't care. So usually most situations, taking control of it is the best idea. So then we need to look at how do we eliminate the fear so I can then take control. And usually that means I have to have a plan. That means I have to have some type of methodology, plan, strategy, something that's going to help me get control of this issue, help me have a solution to this issue. And yes, there may be some short-term discomfort, but it's going to be by your design, not by someone else's, which again, to me, is a far better alternative that it's by your design and not someone else's. And then with the first two, if we're having difficulty coming up with the couple of different alternatives that we may have, if we have difficulty coming up with how we eliminate that fear, and, some, and we're talking about people, and sometimes that person is you, and I think sometimes that becomes the most difficult thing to overcome is the fear that you have, and it's just you, it's not even about other people. Because it's easy to just forego it and say, well, I'll do this tomorrow. I'll do this tomorrow, which is another example of being paralyzed. So the, really the question is at that point, who's going to assist you? And either you're open to someone offering that assistance or you're open to you needing to reach out to someone. It's something that I work with people on all the time. You can go read management books until you're blue in the face. But at the end of the day, it is something about this. This is all about implementation. This is all about taking action. And any of this is geared towards, again, helping you move from where you are today to the future that you want. And all at every point along the way, when you have these instances where you're operating in fear, you need to find your way to get around, through, over, or just blow away this, this sense of fear that paralyzes you. And, and as I'm talking about this, Maybe it's not even as so much for you. This could also be for other people that you work with on a day-to-day -day basis. This operating in fear thing on one hand is so easy, but it is literally one of the most difficult things. But it's easy, it's easy when you put your hand out and say, I'm ready. It's easy when you say, I need help with this. And there's nothing wrong with it. It's actually, if anything, it's a sign of humility. It's a sign of leadership. And quite honestly, even when you look at great CEOs, when you look at people who have accomplished a ton of things in their life, they're there because they tapped into other people. Even Navy SEALs, as awesome as they are, they went through that BUDS program. A lot of our special forces were formed by going through the crucible. They were formed at the insight. They were formed with the help and assistance of other people who have already been there and done that. And again, that's the type of thing that I do with business owners, managers, and key team members day in and day out. It's not something new. It's something that every business owner, manager, and key team member deals with on a day-to-day -day basis. So if you need assistance, you need insights on how we find those alternatives, how we identify the alternatives, how we eliminate the fear, and how one could assist you, contact me. Let me know. I'm here. So that was your Resilient Entrepreneur Podcast number 17. Let's not operate in fear. Let's create a different future for you, your practice, your business, and your team.